ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فإن خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار. All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the one who is truly worthy of all praise. We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Allah belongs the most beautiful names and to Allah belongs attributes of complete perfection. And indeed all thanks is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for indeed Allah is the source of all blessings. And peace and salutations upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent as a mercy to all of the alameen. Brothers and sisters, today I hope that we will appreciate the Iman that Allah has blessed us with. Because we will depict those who will come on the Day of Judgment without Iman, having not believed in Allah. If we look at their situation, because they disbelieved in Allah, the fear, the horror that they see that day, inshallah, will not be a portion for the believers. Brothers and sisters, the heart of the Kuffar on the Day of Judgment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes this in many places in the Qur'an. And of course, because of the limited time, we can only give a few glimpses. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَوْمَ يَخْرُجُونَ مِنَ الْأَجْدَاتِ سِرَاعًا كَأَنَّهُمْ إِلَىٰ نُسُلٍ يُفِضُونَ خَاشَةً عَبَصَارُهُمْ تَرْحَقُمْ ذِلَّةً ذلك اليوم الذي كانوا يعدون. Allah subhanahu wa taala describes them coming out from their graves. That they will come out from their graves, and they will come in, will be coming in a great hurry. Allah says quickly, as if racing to a goal. So they will be coming out of their graves in such a hurry. They will not look left or right. But they will be racing as if they are racing to a goal. Their eyes lowered in fear and humility. Ignominy will be covering them, humiliation. Allah says that is the day they were promised. <coughs> when they leave their graves, they will be in a hurry. What will they be in a hurry towards? The ayah talks about how quickly they will be running. Where will they be running to? A voice will be calling them, and they will be running to the source of this voice. And Allah says, The Nusub, these were their deities. They used to go to them, and they were in a state of happiness and rejoicing. For on this day they will be rushing, but there will be no rejoicing, nor will there be any happiness. Allah Taala says, "Fatawalla anhum, O Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, withdraw from them. Yawm yadudai in a shayin nukr. The day that the caller will call to them, a terrible thing. They will be called and they will race to that call." Allah Taala says, "Khushan Abu Sarum, yahrujun min al-adzad ka'annam jurad muntashir." Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala says they will come forth with humbled eyes from their graves as if they were locusts outspread. Muhtiyin ila al-dar yaqul al-kafirun yaqul al-kafirun yaqul al-kafirun hada yom al-asr. Hasting towards the caller, the disbelievers will say, this is a hard day. 
Allah Taala mentions in this verse the humiliation that will be upon them. And not just that they will be in a hurry racing towards the caller who is calling them, but also it mentions something else. That they will be like the locusts. Maybe some of us have to see the locusts when a locust plague comes and the locusts begin to come out from the ground. As if they are running in the direction of something. Something is calling them. What drives them? Allah only knows. But they are driven. As if they are blind, but they are driven by something. And subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, on that day the, the kuffar will make a'taraf. They themselves will bear witness against themselves. They will bear witness to the hard day that lies ahead of them. SubhanAllah. Another text which stands beside this text, we mentioned before from Surah Yasin. وَنُفِخَ فِي السُّورِ And the trumpet will be blown. فَإِذَا هُمْ مِنَ الْأَجْدَاثِ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ يَنْسِلُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Behold, from their graves to their Lord, they will be hastening. قَالُمْ يَا وَيْلَنَا مَنْ بَعْثَنَا مِنْ مَقَلِنَا They will say, Woe to us, who has raised us up from our place of slumber? And it will be said to them, what will be said to them? It will be said to them that this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised you. Hada wa'ad. This is the wa'ad of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And indeed, the messengers spoke the truth. <coughs> In one ayah we heard how they will say that this is a difficult day. In the next ayah, they will make wail and thubur upon themselves. <coughs> There's something to note here. That the kuffar when they were in the graves, they weren't lying peacefully and comfortably and all of a sudden they were woken up on their slumber. But they were in a state of torment and punishment. They were in pain and torment when they were in their graves. So you can imagine when they came from, from their graves, they received respite. Or as we should perceive that they should have received respite. They've come from their graves, there's a moment of respite. But you see them now, that they are saying water themselves because they know what lies ahead of them as opposed to what was behind them is far worse. The barzakh was easier. But the day that lies in front of them is far harder. And this is why they say, This is a difficult day. Brothers and sisters, because they come to what Allah describes this is the greatest musibah. The greatest of all of the trials, the qiyam. And there's something, subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, sometimes we see this dunya and all of the ease and comfort that some of the people seem to be living in. And we think, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given these people, or is heedless of these people, He's given them free reign. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ اللَّهَ غَابِرٍ أَمَّا يَعْمَرُ الظَّالِمُونَ Do not consider that Allah is unaware or is heedless about what the oppressors are doing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّمَا يُعْقِرُهُمْ لِيَوْمٍ تَشْخَصُ فِيهِ الْأَبْصَارِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted them respite up to a day when the eyes will stare in horror. Allah says on that day their eyes will stare in horror for what they see. Hastening forwards with their necks outstretched, their heads raised up, their gaze not returning to the world. And they will, their hearts, Allah described, and their hearts are empty. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the affair of those people. And He gives some consolation to the believers by saying, do not think that Allah is unacquainted with what the oppressors are doing. Allah is giving them respite. <coughs> but when that respite is over, then you will see them, their eyes in horror. And Allah says, مُخْطِعِينَ مُخْنَئِيرُ أُوسِهِمْ Their necks outstretched, and their eyes, or their gaze, towards the heavens. And their sight doesn't return back to the earth. Because something has busied them. They are now too busy to look left and right. And for fear, Allah says, <coughs> that their hearts are empty. They are unable to think. But we would say that their affair is like the madman who's running in the direction of something that even he doesn't perceive. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has dubbed this their lot in the akhirah. Upon them Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put humiliation and fear. And this is the difference, brothers and sisters, that when we die with faith, iman, that one thing that we can't over until those last moments when we relinquish the soul and we return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Iman the value of that Iman that's when you truly see it and you'll see how all the pounds in the world that people ran after weren't worth it and all the love and the honor and the reverence that people sought and the praise and the relations, in fact, all of the world, all of the world won't be worth anything compared to that Iman <coughs> that will protect us in this moment, in this time. <coughs> Brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, وَأَنذِرْهُمْ يَوْمًا أَزِفَتِهِمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, warn them of the day which is drawing near. This azifa is the khiyana which is drawing me. <coughs> this is what Allah is describing. And what will happen at that? إِذِ الْقُلُوبُ لَدِ الْحَنَاجِرِ When the hearts will be in the throats. <coughs> Have we seen fear like that? When the heart will come out of the chest and in the throat for fear. كَاذِمِينَ مَا لِلظَّالِمِينَ مِنْ حَمِيمٍ وَلَا شَفِيعٍ يُطَاعٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Warn them of the day which is drawing near, when the hearts will be choking the throats. Neither can they lure them into their chest, nor can they throw them out. There will be no friend, nor intercessor on that day. Subhanallah. Imagine that fear. Because the reckoning now is close at hand. Because what the prophets promised is apparent. We see with our eyes. Because now we'll have to give account for what we did. And receive the reward that our own hands reaped. Indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about this day. <coughs> يَوْمَ تُبَدُّلُ أَرْضُ غَيْرَ الْأَرْضِ وَالسَّمَاوَاتُ وَبَرَزُوا لِلَّهِ وَاحِدِ الْقَحَارِ وَتَرَى الْمُجْرِمِينَ يَوْمَ إِذٍ مُقَرَّنِينَ فِي الْأَصْفَارِ سَرَابِلُهُمْ مِنْ قَتَرَانٍ وَتَقْشَى وَجُوهُ الْأَحْنَارِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us and you will see the criminals bound together in fetters their hands shackled to their necks bound together they will be their garments will be of pitch and the fire will cover their faces. SubhanAllah, that's the hal of the Qatar and the of vision. Because they chose to disbelieve in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sarabi, those qumas that they will wear. 
أن الله سبحانه وتعالى يستعمل القطران المادة التي تطلي بها الإبل إذا أصابها الجرب وقيل القطران نحاس There are many opinions but one of them is that it is pitch the pitch which we find in, in, the, in the tar that would be what their clothes would be covered in and their faces would be covered with the fire Brothers and sisters, Allah's Messenger وسلم, described to us the affair on that day. How that the sun <coughs> will come close to the people, will come close to the earth to the extent that the Prophet described it as in Sahih Muslim, in the authority of Al Miqdad ibn al Aswad, that he said that I heard the Messenger of Allah وسلم, say, سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول تدل الشمس يوم القيامة من الخلق حتى تكون منهم كمقدار ميل The Prophet said that the sun will come close on the day of judgment to the creation until it will be the extent that it will be as far as one meal. One of the scholars Salim ibn Amr he says والله ما أدري ما يعني بالمي. I don't know what is meant by this word me. A masafat al Is it the distance of the earth? A mil me. A lady to tahlu bihi al ayn. Is it the distance of the earth? Or is it that me with which pers- a person puts the kuhul uh, in, in the eye? That little instrument that they have with which they put the eyeliner in their eyes. This is also referred to as me. So will the sun draw that close that it will be only above their heads? This is the khiyam. And subhanAllah, Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam described them, فَيَكُنُ النَّاسُ عَلَىٰ قَدْرِ عَمَالٍ فِي الْأَرْقِ That the people on that day, they will be drowned in their own sweat. Based on their actions. Based on their actions. So there has been be amongst them, فَمِنْ هُمْ مَنْ يَكُونُ إِلَىٰ كَعْبَيْهِ There will be those who will be in sweat up to their ankles. وَمِنْ هُمْ مَنْ يَكُونُ إِلَىٰ رُكْبَتَيْهِ And there will be those who will be up to their knees. وَمِنْ هُمْ مَنْ يَكُونُ إِلَىٰ حُقُوبِهِ حُقُوبَيْهِ There will be those all the way up to their throats. <coughs> وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَجُوهُ وَالْأَرْقِ الْجَامِ And there will be those who will be drowned in their own sweat. For lack of actions. On that day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it plain to them for their disbelief and their abandoning Allah's call their affair will be very dire. In Sahih Muslim, in the third of Abdullah ibn Umar anhu, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, يَوْمَ يَقُمُ النَّاسُ لِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ قَالَ يُقُمُ أَحَدٌ فِي رَشْحِهِ إِلَىٰ أَنْسَافِ قُذْنَيْهِ The state of the people of that day would be very dire. As Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam described. And then what will await them is the judgment. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will judge them. And subhanAllah, when Allah will judge them, what will happen to them, then they will be in a state of hasra. Then they will be in a state of grief and regret. Regret is very bitter. We know that. Maybe we all have regret for what has passed before. If we had only done things differently then, Subhanallah, Allah is very merciful. That if a person repents to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then there's no need to regret. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is forgiving. But on this day, there will be real regret because there's no opportunity to return back. While we're still in this dunya, there's an opportunity. Then we can have regret and remorse and return back and ask Allah for forgiveness and cry to Him. 
But on this day there will be no opportunity for that. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, On the day of hasra. On the day of regret. If qudhi al-amr. When the matter will be judged. وَهُمْ فِي غَفْلَةٍ وَهُمْ لَا يُبْرِنِ And they were in a state of heedlessness and they did not believe. They chose to disbelieve. So that day, Allah dubbed it the day of regret. The day of remorse. How much remorse will there be? The kuffar on the day of Qiyamah will bite their hands. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes that affair. يَوْمَ يَعْضُ الظَّالِمُ عَلَىٰ يَدَيْهِ يَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِ اتَّخَدْتُ مَعَ رَسُولِ السَّلِيمَةِ He will say on that day, first of all, he will bite his hands, the ظَالِمُ and on his fingers, and he will say, if only, more to me, if only I had taken the path of the messengers, if only I had listened to the messengers, and of course, there'll be too late for that. Ya wailata laytani lam attakhidu fulan khalila. On that day, he will say, Woe to me, if only I had not taken such and such a person as my friend. You know, in this dunya, one of the biggest problems is friends. The friends that we choose, we're on the religion of our friends. So whatever our friends are upon, that's where we're upon. There's no halfway yard. There's either friends who will lead you to the righteousness, or friends that will lead you to evil. On that day, the violent will blame his friends. If only I hadn't taken the path with those friends of mine, who led me to the wrong path. But there's no point in blaming anybody now. Why did we remain in a state of heedlessness? Following those friends who led us, and we followed them willingly. Where are they today when the punishment of Allah is upon us? SubhanAllah, these friends, especially for the young people, who seem to think that their friends are better than their own parents. And they offer more sincere advice. And they're better than them for them than their brothers and their sisters. Those are the same friends who will lead you on a Friday night into the town to participate in intoxication and other evils. The same friends, when the time of prayer comes and you made wudu to pray, and they will come and knock at the door and they will say, let's go play soccer, you can pray afterwards. The same friends. The same friends when you came to the masjid to, to learn the Quran. And the same friends stood outside the door and said, nobody knows, let's skip the class today. We know them, don't we? We all perhaps have them, those friends. On this day, we will say, if we had only not taken those as friends. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us finally their statement. They prevented me from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after, after it come to me. And then Allah says, وَكَانَ الشَّيْطَانِ الْإِنسَانِ الْخَذُولًا And then shaitan is indeed for mankind one who offers him many things, but he gives him nothing. Deceiver. He causes him to be taken by deception. On that day, on the day of Qiyamah, the kafir will have complete yaqeen about his sins that they will never be forgiven. Because it's too late. The door of Tawbah is open. Up to what time? Up to either 
the soul reaching the throat when it rattles, or until the sun sets, or sun, sun rises in the west and sets in the east. <coughs> Up to that time, the door of Toba is open to you. But on this day, there's no more room. There's no more time. Toba has long gone now. So they will say, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَيَوْمَ تَقُومُ السَّاعَةِ الْمُجْرِمُونَ They will have complete yas. There is no chance now for them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us of their last statements. The tamanni of the kuffar on that day, that if there is no other respite except death, they are willing to take death. But even on that day, there will be no death to save them. On that day, one of them will desire those who disbelieved and disobeyed the messengers that if they were just turned to dust and became like that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us one of their statements. If only on that day I become like the dust. On that day, there will be no such aid. Allah will not allow us to become dust. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will meet out for us what we deserve. Brothers and sisters, the Qiyana is a very difficult, horrific and terrible time for those who disbelieve. But for the believer, we must also be warned. This is the heart of the kuffar, but there are amongst the believers of Osar, those who do sins, and those sins will cause the Qiyamah to be a hard day for them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not allow us to be in aman in the dunya, and then have aman in the akhirah. Those who are in fear of Allah in the dunya, Allah will give them aman in the akhirah. Those who have aman of Allah and think that, oh, there won't be a count, a count. They won't have aman in the akhirah, they will have fear. So brothers and sisters, let us always keep the qiyamah in front of us. So that inshallah it will stop us and prevent us from doing sins and doing evil. SubhanAllah, sometimes the sin and the evil, we see it as something which is insignificant. A statement that we might say. Because it seems like nothing, but to Allah, it's very great. So every action of ours and every statement of ours and every thought of ours, we should check. By reminding ourselves of the Qiyamah, brothers and sisters, we will rectify ourselves. And it's exactly when we forget about the Qiyamah and the Ahwal of the Qiyamah that we allow ourselves prone to fall into sins in heaven. When the Qiyamah is front of us, and we talk about the Qiyamah. And we imagine what will be there that day. We dare not sin. But subhanAllah, unfortunately, we're like a people. Once a boy was asked by his father, Son, why has Allah given me two ears? He said to hear from this ear and to let it go out from this ear. And this is what we are. We hear it from this ear on the Jummah, and when we leave the Jummah, come out of this heat. It doesn't need to be like that. This is for us to take a lesson. A lesson which inshallah if we pay heed to it, it will rectify our life and make us successful. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us a people who be the true back to be true and give us a big back to them and also make us a people and be the false of God to be false to the Holy Allah. Alhamdulillah, <laughs> <laughs> 
يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما وقال صلى الله عليه وسلم من صلى علي مره واحده صلى الله عليه بها احد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد رب اللهم ارضعك الخلفاء الراشدين المهديين ابي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعن سائر اصحاب نبيك اجمعين ونحن بك طيبين طاهرين وارض اللهم عنا ما امر بمنك وكرمك ودونك يا ارحم الراحمين اللهم اعز الاسلام والمسلمين اللهم اعز الاسلام والمسلمين اللهم اعز الاسلام والمسلمين واذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر اعداء الدين واحمي حوزه الاسلام يا رب العالمين اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات الاحياء من الاموات عباد الله رحمكم الله ان الله يامر بالعدل والاحسان وايتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله الذي يذكركم وادعوه يستجب لكم ولذكر الله اكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون واعطوا الله